Ever heard of an engine so tough it outlasted the trucks it powered? Born in the ashes of World War II, this engine became the backbone of post-war America, hauling freight, digging mines, and powering rail cars. But this same engine rattled, leaked oil everywhere, and drove mechanics insane. And yet, operators kept coming back for more. Meet the Detroit Diesel 6110, the loud, leaky engine that became the trucking industry's most embarrassing success story. The year is 1945, World War II has just ended, and America is hungry for power. The nation's factories are retooling from wartime production to peacetime prosperity, and there's a high demand for heavy-duty equipment that can handle anything you throw at it. The result was the Detroit 6110, a straight-six two-stroke diesel engine. Built by General Motors' Detroit Diesel Division, this engine was their answer to the demand for an engine that could handle everything from hauling freight to powering boats. This wasn't just another diesel engine rolling off the production line. This was General Motors' declaration that American engineering could create something bigger, stronger, and more durable. The specifications alone tell the story of ambition. A straight-six configuration with two-stroke diesel operation displacing 660 cubic inches of pure mechanical aggression. Power output ranged from 275 to 349 horsepower depending on the application, with torque figures climbing as high as 1,020 pound-feet. The engine weighed approximately 4,000 pounds dry, making it a heavyweight champion in every sense of the word. This engine could power everything from massive Euclid mining trucks to sleek Bud RDC rail cars. But it was more than just numbers on a specification sheet. It represented a philosophy of engineering that believed in overbuilding rather than optimizing, in creating machines that would outlast their operators rather than requiring constant maintenance. If you've ever stood next to a running Detroit 6110, you know the sound. A high-pitched metallic scream. It's a sound that once heard is never forgotten. But why did it sound like that? The answer lies in the fundamental design philosophy of the two-stroke diesel cycle. Unlike four-stroke diesels that fire every other revolution, this engine fired every revolution, creating twice as many power pulses per minute. This meant more combustion events, more mechanical noise, and a signature Detroit scream that became legendary among operators and absolutely despised by everyone else within a half mile radius. The sound was so distinctive that experienced operators could diagnose engine problems just by listening. A slight change in the pitch might indicate a failing injector. A rattling undertone could mean worn bearings. But the combustion noise was only part of the story. The real contributor to its notorious sound was its blower system. Early models used a centrifugal blower, a high-speed impeller that spun at up to 10 times engine speed to force air into the cylinders. When it worked properly, it produced a distinctive whine that could be heard from blocks away. When it failed, and it failed often, it would explode with a sound like a bomb going off, sending shrapnel through the engine bay and occasionally through the hood itself. But why did Detroit Diesel use a centrifugal blower instead of the proven roots type that works so well on other engines? The centrifugal blower was incredibly efficient for constant speed applications like generators and marine engines where RPMs remained relatively steady. It could move massive amounts of air with less parasitic power loss than a roots blower. But in trucks and mobile equipment, where RPMs could spike suddenly and dramatically, the centrifugal blower often failed catastrophically. The impeller would overspeed, disintegrate, and send metal fragments throughout the engine bay. After a few too many grenaded engines and some very unhappy customers, Detroit switched to the more reliable roots blower in later models, though by then the damage to the engine's reputation was already done. The massive size and intense vibration of the engine meant gaskets were under constant assault. 
Oil seeped from valve covers, head gaskets wept continuously, and even the exhaust manifold seemed to develop mysterious oil stains that defied explanation. The two-stroke design required a blower to force air into the cylinders, but also created more places for oil to escape. But here's the twist that made the engine legendary. Even as oil dripped steadily onto the ground, the engine just kept running. You could run it nearly dry, top it off with whatever oil was handy, and it would fire right back up without missing a beat. Despite its quirks, oil leaks, and ear-splitting noise, the 6110 earned a reputation for being nearly indestructible. This wasn't marketing hype or wishful thinking. It was documented fact witnessed by thousands of operators across dozens of industries. But what made this engine so incredibly durable when its contemporaries were failing left and right? The answer lay in Detroit Diesel's philosophy of overbuilding everything. The engine block was massively overbuilt with wall thicknesses that seemed excessive until you realized they were designed to handle abuse that would destroy lesser engines. The internals were similarly massive with bearings connecting rods and pistons that looked like they belonged in a locomotive rather than a truck engine. The two-stroke cycle itself contributed to the engine's durability. With fewer moving parts than a comparable four-stroke engine, there were fewer things that could break. The Uniflow scavenging system, where air entered through ports in the cylinder walls and exhaust exited through poppet valves, was both efficient and robust. The unit fuel injection system, where each cylinder had its own injector, reduced the risk of catastrophic fuel system failure that could bring down an entire engine. But perhaps most importantly, the engine was designed with tolerances that would be considered sloppy by today's standards. This wasn't poor engineering, it was intentional. Loose tolerances meant the engine could continue running even as components wore, even as gaskets failed, even as oil pressure dropped to levels that would seize a modern engine. This engine was built to run hard. Its versatility was perhaps its greatest strength. While many engines were designed for specific applications, the 6110 seemed to adapt to whatever task was thrown at it, each application revealing new aspects of its character and capabilities. In mining trucks, this engine became the heartbeat of America's extractive industries. These massive vehicles loaded with tons of ore would climb steep mountain grades that would break lesser engines. The engine's torque characteristics were perfect for this application, providing massive pulling power at low RPMs while maintaining the reliability needed for round-the-clock operations. The railroad industry embraced the engine with enthusiasm, installing it in Bud RDC units that provided passenger service across America. These sleek, stainless steel cars carried their 6110s underneath the passenger compartments, where the engine's distinctive scream became part of the travel experience. Marine applications revealed another side of the engine's personality. In boats where engine failure could be literally life-threatening, the 6110's reliability was not just appreciated, but absolutely crucial. Commercial fishing vessels, tugboats, and pleasure craft all trusted their lives to the engine's ability to keep running no matter what. The oil leaks that frustrated truck mechanics became irrelevant on the water, and the engine's ability to run in all conditions made it a favorite among mariners who needed absolute dependability. Construction equipment manufacturers discovered that the engine could handle the constant stop and go operation, the varying loads and the harsh environmental conditions that destroyed other engines. Excavators, cranes and generators all benefited from the engine's torque characteristics and unshakable reliability. Every great engine has its quirks, but the 6110s weren't just minor inconveniences. They were personality traits that operators learned to work with, around, and sometimes even appreciate. The starting procedure was more ritual than routine. Cold starts required patience, skill, and sometimes a bit of luck. The engine needed to be properly warmed up. The blower had to be operating correctly and the fuel system had to be perfectly primed. Experienced operators developed their own starting sequences. Personal techniques passed down from mentor to apprentice, 
like family recipes. The noise levels were beyond description. OSHA regulations didn't exist when the engine was in its prime, and operators simply accepted that working around the engine meant gradual hearing loss. The combination of combustion noise, blower whine, and mechanical clatter created a sound that could be heard for miles. Some operators claimed they could identify individual 6110 cess by their sound signature, recognizing subtle variations in pitch and rhythm like a conductor, recognizing different violins in an orchestra. But for every complaint, there was a story of this engine outlasting the equipment it powered. Trucks would be scrapped while their engines were pulled out and installed in new chassis. The engine's longevity became the stuff of legend, with documented cases of the engine accumulating hundreds of thousands of hours of operation without major overhauls. To truly understand this engine's place in history, it's important to consider the technological context of its era. This was the dawn of the diesel age in America, when the technology was still new and somewhat experimental. Gasoline engines dominated the landscape, and diesel was viewed with suspicion by many operators who were unfamiliar with its characteristics. The 6110 arrived at a time when American industry was transitioning from steam power to internal combustion. Steam engines had been the workhorses of industry for over a century, but they were labor-intensive, slow to start, and increasingly inefficient compared to the new diesel technology. The Eng offered the reliability and torque characteristics of steam with the convenience and efficiency of internal combustion. Competing engines of the era were generally four-stroke designs that prioritized fuel efficiency over raw power. The engine's two-stroke design was considered somewhat radical, offering twice the power pulses per revolution at the cost of higher fuel consumption and increased noise. This trade-off made perfect sense for applications where power and reliability were more important than economy and refinement. The manufacturing techniques of the 1940s and 1950s also influenced the engine's design. Modern precision manufacturing didn't exist, so engines had to be designed with tolerances that could accommodate the limitations of the available machining equipment. This actually worked in the engine's favor as its loose tolerances contributed to its legendary durability. By the early 1960s, the world was changing and the engine was beginning to show its age. The new V-Series Detroit diesels offered more power in lighter, more compact packages. The 6V53 and 8V71 engines provided similar power output with better fuel economy, lower noise levels, and more refined operation. The writing was on the wall for the old straight six giant. Environmental concerns were beginning to emerge and the engine's heavy oil consumption and visible emissions were becoming liabilities rather than mere inconveniences. The engine's weight was also becoming a problem as transportation regulations began to limit gross vehicle weights, making every pound of engine weight a pound less of payload capacity. Parts availability was becoming an issue as production volumes declined. The 6110 required specialized components that weren't shared with other engines, making it expensive to maintain as production numbers dropped. The final blow came in 1965, when Detroit Diesel officially discontinued the engine, ending a 20-year production run that had established the engine as both a legend and a cautionary tale. The influence of this engine extended far beyond its production years. The lessons learned from its successes and failures influenced the design of future Detroit Diesel engines. The importance of reliable blower systems the value of overbuilt construction, and the need for proper sealing all became part of the institutional knowledge that shaped subsequent designs. The engine's reputation for durability set expectations that Detroit Diesel had to meet with every subsequent design. Customers who had experienced the 6110's legendary reliability expected nothing less from newer engines, creating a standard of performance that influenced the company's engineering philosophy for decades. The engine also demonstrated the importance of application-specific engineering. While the engine was successful in some applications, 
its limitations and others showed that there was no such thing as a truly universal engine. This lesson led to the development of specialized engines optimized for specific applications rather than trying to create one engine that could do everything. The last 6105s in regular service were finally retired in the 1980s and 1990s, more than two decades after production ended. These final examples had been maintained by operators who refused to give up on their old faithful engines, keeping them running through determination, skill, and an ever dwindling supply of parts. Some of these final ones had accumulated operating hours that seemed impossible. Engines with hundreds of thousands of hours of operation, machines that had outlived multiple generations of replacement parts, power plants that had served their communities for decades without major failures. These weren't just engines, they were monuments to the durability that American manufacturing could achieve when that was the primary goal. The retirement of the last commercial ones marked the end of an era in American industrial history. These engines had powered the post-war boom, moved the materials that built modern America, and provided the reliable power that kept essential services running. The engine stands as a testament to an era when American engineering prioritized durability over efficiency, when machines were built to last rather than to minimize cost, and when the relationship between operator and equipment was based on mutual respect and understanding. It was loud, it leaked, it was inefficient by modern standards, but it worked when working was what mattered most. So would you rather have an engine that's quiet, clean, and perfectly mannered, but might leave you stranded, or would you choose the loud, leaky engine that embarrasses you at every truck stop, but never fails to get you home? Let us know in the comments below. And hey, if you've made it this far into the story of America's most stubborn engine, you're clearly the type who appreciates mechanical tales. Do everyone a favor and smash that subscribe button like it's a 611 that just won't start on a cold morning. We have more stories waiting for you.